Like it or not, you're gonna get stressed at some point in your life, if you haven't already. It might be at work, it might be with friends and family. What the most important thing is trying to figure out why you're stressed and how to deal with it. So that's what we're gonna do in this episode. If you don't know us already, my name is Abdul, I'm joined with Ams. We're both junior docs in London and the co-founders of Peer. So Ams, you've probably been stressed. Yeah. You're embarking on this crazy journey, but let's take it all the way back. What does the word even mean? So stress is a response and it's a response to adverse and challenging circumstances. And the response is usually in some form of emotion, behavioral response or psychological Mm -hmm. response, right? And like you said, the truth is that everyone's going to feel stressful in one moment of their life Mm -hmm. and in different aspects of their life. So some people might have financial stressors, relationship stressors, academic stressors, career stressors. Um, living stressors right and it's all about the response to it and I think the important thing that we need to discuss today is if everyone is going to go through it how should everyone or how can people what are the tools that people can pull upon to deal with stress Mm. Um, so yeah so what do you think let's talk about that yeah I agree everyone's going to experience it at some point in their lives most important thing is identifying your stress and kind of taking control. Mm. Um, So some of the ways, I've been doing a bit of reading around it, and some of the ways when people can realize they're stressed is, you know, lack of sleep, struggling to sleep. You know, people say they feel a bit more depressed. They're struggling to work, you know, they're struggling at work. They're making mistakes. Mm. Um, They're losing empathy for other people. Um, And like you said, there's a variety of signs which show that, okay, you're stressed Mm. and kind of from the reading I did there's there's a professor called um, Cary Cooper from University of Lancaster who's like an occupational health expert Mm -hmm. and he said the two most important things regarding stress is to identify your stress Mm -hmm. and to take control of it and there's many ways you can deal with stress and we're going to cover them and the the key thing he said in life most often than not there's always a solution to a problem and if you let you know things get out of hand, let things get out of control, that's when you start to feel overwhelmed. Mm. Um, and kind of, we will probably break down the different things. So I don't know what are some of the things you know or you've experienced from stress or how you kind of identified you being stressed. So identifying how when I'm stressed out. So I think the first thing I do is I know I'm naturally anxious and agitated. Yeah, I think agitation is uh, is quite an important one. So when I've been stressed out in the past, be it through med school, be it through, you know, the whole application process, mm. interviews, getting into med school, then the exams, OSCEs, etc. I naturally have a heightened state of anxiety. So I can feel my heart rate's a little bit higher. Mm. I'm a little bit more hyper alert. Uh, also a little bit irritable. Mm. I don't want too many people to bug me. And when people ask me like, Questions that are sort of standard questions to ask. It's humane to ask those questions of what am I doing? What am I up to? I just don't want to, I don't want to engage in any conversation. Mm. Um, I think that's when I'm not handling stress well. But I think over the years, through experience, through personal development and growth, I've come to a stage where I can recognize when I'm stressed. Um, and I do recognize when I'm stressed. I think that is the most telltale sign I have is that I'm naturally just irritated and agitated. Um, what about you? What happens when you're stressed out? So two things. One I learned recently. Mm. One I knew. So my sleep is affected. Like I struggle to mm. sleep. So I'm like an overthinker sometimes. Mm. When I'm stressed, I think it makes me find it very difficult to sleep. Mm. Um, and more recently, what I realize is I get loads of stress ulcers. Like I don't know if you have ulcers. Yes. I've never had yeah, that before. Yeah. Ulcers around your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used to always get it like during like certain time frames or periods and then I was speaking to a few people and they're like they're stress ulcers Mm -hmm. um so those are the two things that I know but sleep sleep is the biggest thing I I start thinking about all the things at night I'm messaging people like that is my telltale sign you struggled with insomnia in the past as well haven't you so 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 imagine insomnia plus stress Mm -hmm. like it is the worst mix so um I yeah those are my two signs that I'm stressed do you feel you balance stress better now then so I know so Obviously, now I know when I'm stressed. Mm. I try to do things to make it better. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. Compared to a few years ago, definitely I'm managing it better. Mm. I would like to think so. 
Wicked. Um, all right then, let's talk about the tools and the tips that we have from our reading, our research mm. and from our general life experience on how people can manage their stresses. Um, I'll let you take the first one and let's let's talk about that. Fine. So let's say you're stressed, you've identified, you know, you're, you're irritable, you're mm. struggling to work, you're struggling to sleep. All right. So that's the first step, identifying stress. Mm. Now it's how do we deal with it? So one of the most commonly said things and everyone's going to say is activity, moving your body, exercise. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you felt it, but some people say, you know, when they're tense, they feel, you know, their muscles seize up, they're a bit tense, they're mm -hmm. struggling, they don't feel as fluid and as relaxed, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the most important things you can do when you're stressed is start being active. Yeah. Start going to the gym, start exercising. Yeah. And if you're someone that doesn't do it already, it's something I think you should start incorporating into your day-to-day -day life, in, mm -hmm. into your timetable. Um, so exercising, working out, going for a run. Um, and I remember this, I don't know if you read the book by Phil Knight, right? Shoe Dog. Like when he was stressed, he used to run for miles on end. Like that was his way of clearing his head, clearing yeah. his thoughts. And it allowed him to have his own time. Um, so yeah, exercise is probably one of the most important things you can do when you're stressed. I think on the topic of exercise, like I felt it before as well, where I think when I need to just remove myself and extract, extract myself from a situation, right? I just go, go to the gym. I just end up at the gym. And I think it's, a, it's, why is it really good? So A, we know that the research shows that you get the dopamine hits, yeah. right? It, it makes you feel a lot better. You feel, oh, as you train more, as you exercise more, you don't have to lift weights, by the way. We're talking about running even or mm -hmm. cardio work or yoga, or whatever, just activity. You get dopamine release. You also start to feel better about yourself. I think a lot of um, the response to stress like one of the signs and symptoms is that sort of negative thinking, right? That you don't feel good about yourself as well. That starts to creep in. And I think exercise helps with that. I felt it personally. I felt that since I started going to the gym, eating better, putting on a lot more mass, I was always insecure about being too skinny. Mm -hmm. Might have now become a bit too much of the other, <laughs> too heavy now. But um, I was a lot more... I had a lack of confidence, a lack of self-esteem. And now I'm sitting in front of a camera speaking on YouTube, right? Uh, I'm tweeting a lot. I'm out in the public eye a lot more. And I don't think, I think I get that confidence a lot has been helped by mm. going to the gym, exercising, feeling better about myself. Mm. Um, another reason why it helps stress management is that sometimes stress overwhelms you. Right, stress, stress overwhelms you. You have so many tasks, or you have this chronic stress that's always at you, and it's a break away from that. Mm. And there's this saying, I forgot who said it, but when you have this um, blank period where your mind doesn't isn't focused on thinking on one thing, right? Mm. It starts to ruminate over solutions, mm. uh, and you start to become more creative. So when you're at the gym, your mind's not on the stressor, and usually you can come back from that gym session, that exercise session, and suddenly you're like, ah. I've got a solution for this or I know how to tackle it or I've got a bit of drive to suddenly tackle this problem head on. Um, that's been my experience with it. So what about you? You started calisthenics mm. at university. Mm. Did that help you in any way of managing the academic yeah. stressor? I think it, like, so it's probably what you said. It's like I enjoyed it. So what I did, I did gym like weights and stuff like that. Mm. And I didn't like it. It felt unnatural for me. I wasn't a big fan of it. Then did calisthenics. And then, yeah, I did think it helped with stress because even the walk to the park or the outdoor gym allows you to clear your head. You're thinking about, okay, this one I'm going to work out. You know, you stay focused. And like you said, that brief period of time, you're not focused on all your life stresses, all your life problems, mm -hmm. right? And you're just focusing on working out. And then naturally you start to think of solutions while you're there right but i think it's a natural way to break because when you're working out you're exerting yourself right yeah, yeah it's not yeah. something working out it's not something you can do blindly or not with a lot of concentration if that makes sense mm -hmm. do you know what i mean and maybe that in itself is why you're not thinking about your problems mm -hmm. and you feel a bit more relaxed um and you kind of take yourself out of the situation but then it goes on to what you said earlier is you feel overwhelmed i think one of the main things with stress is the loss of control mm -hmm. Like when you're not in control of your problems, you can't really empower yourself to come up with a solution to that problem, which is causing your stress. Mm. And I think one of the saying is, you know, when you're, you, when you lose control, that's when you get overwhelmed by stress mm. and everything starts to take a hit. 
Um, so those two things, I think, are quite important in managing your stress. So just to clarify, the second tip that you gave was to take control, right? Mm. So I think that's a difficult one, though, to say take control. I feel like a lot of people will turn around in the comments or say to us, you can't take control of every situation, right? Some things you can't. But I think what's in, what you're trying to say is more so is at least attempt to try to take control. Mm. So I've been in the sort of situations where other people have come to me with certain issues, with certain problems. And I think this piece of advice is quite strong where attempt to take control, break it down. What things can you take? So you might say, oh, how do I take control of the fact that I don't have no money? Mm. Right. But what I always say is break it down. What things can you do to take control of this situation where you need money? So, for example, are there any governmental mm. bursaries, schemes, loans, job seekers allowance, working tax credits? There's a lot of things out there, right? Do you know about it even? Start to take control of the situation, right? So I think a lot of students, we often go to it where we don't have a lot of money, right? Um, and I know colleagues that have been in really difficult positions with the lack of money. Mm. But then... I, I remember once I cited them towards a certain bursary, a certain grant, and they were like, I never knew about this. Yeah. So trying to take control also means going out there, doing your research. Do you know about things? What things are you eligible? And just trying to take control. Some things you can't, let's be honest. Mm. Some things you cannot. So imagine you need money and you're not eligible. Mm. Um, it's very difficult. But attempting to take control is a, is a solution oriented mindset that helps with stress management and then moving off that point you said which kind of brings us on to the third important thing in managing is connecting with people mm. so you had people that came to you when they were stressed and you were able to help them mm. so i think having a strong support system of friends family work mm. colleagues will help you in times of need when you are stressed there are people you can speak to to help you break down your problems right so that individual was stressed mm. you are part of their support network they came to you and them kind of discussing their problems, mm. you were somehow able to come up with a solution, right? So imagine you don't have a strong support network or you don't have many friends or family, then it's a bit more difficult. Now that, that, that's so important, but that's, that's so important for also mental health in general as well, right? A lot of people, I don't know why, like it's, it's, it's very prevalent in med school, this dog eat dog, uh, lone wolf type behavior. Mm. But when you get out into the big world, right? The adult world, it's a, you have to work in collaboration with different teams and it's in any industry. Um, and I think we need to understand that early on. And it's like what you said, man. Social support is so important, not just for stress management. It's important in your careers, in your relationship. It's important to be able to talk to people, ask them for advice. Different people have different experiences. Um, so you're absolutely right. I think... In terms of stress management, mental health and all of that, I think we all just have to be okay with asking for help, for advice and for saying, I need help. Yeah. I, there was a recent video that went viral, that UFC fighter, did you see it? Yeah, the Paddy, the so, Irish. Do you remember that what he said though? I forgot what he said word for word. Do you remember what he said word for word? No, I can't remember. And it was something along the lines of basically, just start talking, start opening up. Um, I'm going to actually put a snippet of the clip into this video. Um, and I think we don't do enough of that, of just saying, look, I need help. Can you help me out? Um, have you ever turned to anyone and they've said they won't help you? Nah, very rarely. And it's probably because they physically can't. Mm -hmm. But most often than not, as humans, the way we're, we're, we're designed, our, you know, our societal mentality, like most often than not, if someone comes to you needing help, seeking help, you will do something within your means and capability to help them out. It would be very rare for someone to turn around and say, I'm not going to help you. Mm -hmm. um, unless they're like some type A surgeon wannabe, <laughs> want to go into fear or something. But yeah, but like it's very rarely. Most people, even random strangers, if you ask them for help, most likely they will help you. Exactly. So th that's my point. Like, Think about it. how many LinkedIn messages do you get? How many Twitter DMs do you get for asking for business support or for idea generation or whatever it is? You often reply with something useful, point them in the right direction or even take a full on Zoom call. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very rare that people won't help. I think sometimes people can't help. Yeah. Uh, but at the bare minimum, I bet you most people will at least point you in the right direction. Yeah. They'll point you in the right direction. Yeah, the other thing to say is, 
you may be in a situation you don't have friends or family you may not have supportive work colleagues but there is someone somewhere that is always willing to help mm-hmm. there's always helplines there's always organizations mm-hmm. and um, platforms that do help you right yeah. so I think always look out for them because I can imagine certain problems you don't want to share with your work colleagues you don't want to share with your friends or family um, but what I thought of at the same time was on the flip side is think of the times where you are stressed but you are called out to go out with your mates and have fun mm-hmm. and you're just cracking jokes you're chilling you're hanging out and you forget about all the stresses you're laughing so spending time with friends and family mm-hmm. doing things you enjoy is also a nice stress reliever you know the problem with that though is when you are stressed, right? Mm. You often say no to those things. True. Uh, I've done it before where I'm stressed out. Again, you're overwhelmed by tasks and whatever. Your mate calls you up and says, "Hey, let's go out tonight." Mm. Or your family says, "We've got a birthday party to go to," or whatever. And you say no, and you purposely isolate yourself. But that comes back to your earlier on point. You need to be aware mm. of when you're going down this spiraling curve, right? And you need to understand when you're becoming stressed, when you're starting to isolate yourself, when you've got negative thinking coming on. Um, so yeah, you're right. So talking about pulling on your social relationships, right? This goes on to the next point about looking after yourself through personal time. So what things do you do for about with your personal time? What things do you do where it's just for yourself? So the things I like to do just for myself when no one's involved is obviously reading, going out for a walk, mm. calisthenics, um, I think those are the top few things that I do. Even, do you know what? Even stuff like chilling and watching Netflix. Mm. I know it's not the most productive thing and we even made a video why I think it is productive. Mm. But that personal time, mm. it's just me by myself. I get to do whatever I want. Something that I enjoy mm. um, is super, super important. 100%. So th- this is a bit of advice to the people who are doing intense projects or whatever, right? I've done that. I've done it where I've worked flat out and that's all I've done. I've said no to friends contacting me. I've told family, no parties, no nothing. All I'm going to do is eat, sleep and work. Um, And what you find is that your productivity just dips and it continues to dip. And you you sit there for six hours and you get the work work done that you could have done in a fresh state within two minutes maybe, right? So I think, you know, like understanding that Taking a break, taking time for yourself, it gives you renewed energy. It, it refreshes you. And I think productivity is kept a lot higher when you do it in small segmented time slots rather than just constantly being at it. That's all you're doing and life is just eat, sleep, repeat. Similar to you, you think you need all the time in the world to do stuff, but it's the days when I'm running around, you know, picking up my sister from school, taking my parents shopping, you know, need to kind of get ready, do some research. That's when you end up doing all of that stuff. And the days when you have nothing planned is the days you don't do anything. Um, And then talking about productivity, staying busy, Mm. the next point kind of brings us on to is challenging yourself, setting yourself goals, personal. It may be in your career, it may be at your work. Mm. And I think we, it seems that we don't do this as much as we should. You know, setting yourself a challenge or a goal of, you know, I'm going to learn a new sport. I'm going to learn a new language. We know a friend of ours who's learning how to code Mm. as a clinician. And it's this learning process that builds resilience and allows you to have the ability to deal with stress. So I don't know if that makes sense or what you think of that kind of mentality and framework. So I've I've got a different, a slightly different uh, outlook on uh, setting goals and how it relates to stress, right? Mm. So the way I look at it is when, when we're stressed out, it's an overbur it's it's an overburdening sort of um task for us. Mm. And the task is something big. So something like complete medical school. Yeah. Right? That that's the big task. And that overwhelms you. Damn, I've how am I gonna get through five, six years, constant exams, essays, OSCEs, etc. etc. But then when you start to just break it down and goal set. So for year one, I need to get past exams A, B, and C. I need to learn content. A, B, and C. When you start to break it down into smaller goals, suddenly it's achievable. Uh, was it Bill Gates that said everyone underestimates how much they can do in a year and, um, sorry, overestimates how much they can do in one year and underestimates how much they can do in 10 years? In essence, that's saying the same thing, right? If, we, if I sit here and say, you need to complete F1, F2 training, like to the best of the standards, but if I now give you a list of competencies, mm. you could say, look at it and go, all right, I can do this skill, that skill, that one I'm going to learn, that one I'm going to go do a course on, this one I will learn by the end of this rotation. It's manageable. Mm. So I think 
setting goals it's very important to stress management because what it does it makes the stress the stressor manageable mm. that's what's really important to it and that goes back to the point of taking control and ownership mm. it's you know what the problem is and now you're breaking it down to something more manageable something that you can empower yourself to overcome and get through fine so what are other things that are important when you are stressed and you're trying to deal with it mm. so the next tip that we had was talking about unhealthy habits okay. right unhealthy habits now it's a difficult one because when you debate with people about this some people say oh but say for example having uh, unhealthy food it's like it is a form of enjoyment a breakaway um and it gives them that relief for that moment i don't know my exact stance on it but what i think is that too much of a certain unhealthy habit is never good for you yeah. so for example you might say oh you know what today i'm going to pig out and i'm going to have really greasy kebabs and something mm. right fine you enjoy it gives you that relaxation you might watch a netflix movie really unwind it helps you refresh fantastic but i think if you were to have it every meal mm. every day for even like 3 weeks mm. i think you would feel horrible about yourself Definitely. i know for myself it happens a lot if i have like on a in a row say 2 to 3 days of having really unhealthy meals i feel horrible about myself mm. and i can't focus i can't sit and work i can't bang out the tasks that i need to do um so it really affects me so unhealthy habits like that and then we've got obviously i don't drink but other people who drink it's a it's a you can spiral out of control right so what happens is people can drink to manage stressors mm. then you drink more then you drink more then you are using drink, drinking as a way to escape mm. suddenly you're alcohol dependent mm. so i mean you have to be aware you have to be aware what you do um what's your thoughts on unhealthy habits yeah i agree i think the key is not to become dependent on them mm. so let's say you feel down you feel crap and you're like Do you know what i'm just going to have like a you know a greasy kebab because mm-hmm. it makes you feel good because we all like mm-hmm. something like that right and i think the key thing is not to become reliant upon it start associating this with helping you deal with the stress right because mm-hmm. it's what you call temporary relief right same as alcohol and smoking yeah, is yeah. temporary relief from the stressor you mm-hmm. then become dependent on it thinking it's going to help you but really truly it doesn't help you at all with the cause it's mm-hmm. fleeting and i think fair enough if you need to have a greasy diet or whatever for the one or two times just to make you feel better fair enough but becoming reliant upon it and thinking it's going to solve your problems that's when you can end up in a very difficult situation yeah, d- dependency is something you never ever want to create you see all the time think of how many people come into ane mm. with alcohol dependency or drug overdose and when you hear their story it's like do you know what i was never like this mm. you know you hear people that were lawyers mm. you know that have a high flying accounting job something happened at work yeah. they start losing their family and they're getting divorced turned to drink and you know alcohol and drugs mm. now became dependent and now in hospital right obviously this is a long story but like depending on them for your stress relief is obviously very very difficult mm. all right so let's talk about the next point now um so the next point is more so about sort of uh what do you call it it's it's more relaxation so meditation deep breathing yoga um why do you think that works why does that work we've seen a lot of people say they do that and it helps them especially a lot of ceos and founders of companies they say i have a morning meditation r- uh, routine why does that work i think it's same as what you said what happens when you go to the gym right i think it's that moment in the day where you pull yourself out from the situation you're with mm. from the life you're living or the day-to-day stresses of life mm. i think you are consciously removing yourself from this environment mm. which might be work which might be you know your personal life at home or whatever mm. and you're just focusing on yourself or just the core things which is you know deep breathing exercises mm. or yoga or mindfulness right yeah. whereas if you don't do that the whole day you're just thinking about things you're caught up in the way of life right mm. there's always one thing or another that needs to be done Yeah. There's you know there's an overwhelming number of to-do lists and tasks right. Mm-hmm. So imagine you take a 5 minute break and you're just like you know what I'm going to take myself out of this situation I'm going to de- take deep breathing exercise I'm going to clear my head. Yeah. Uh, so I I don't do yoga and I don't do meditation but the deep breathing bit I do something similar to it. So when I'm really stressed out um especially in circumstances where I need to make a decision I do this thing quite a lot where 
I literally step back mm. and I would just maybe sit and I would just think. I don't know if I'm consciously deep breathing or whatever, but I'm definitely just pausing for a moment and just trying to contextualize everything so I can make an appropriate decision. Uh, but you're right, pausing and just to become aware of yourself is a very powerful tool to managing stress. Um, let's talk about the next one. And this one I'm really interested in uh, speaking on about actually. The power of positivity, um, optimism. Um, I really love this point. This point is so important to me as a person for stress management, right? So in any project, in any life endeavor, whatever it is, whether it's your marriage, your uh, your family, your med school, your academic life, your career, your startup, I find that optimism is such a good driver to managing stress because I find that you've got this almost invincible attitude towards mm. any problem can come my way, I will solve it. I will, and it then draws upon, you know, the other tools we talked about, taking control, mm. setting goals and challenges. All of that comes together underneath and it's dry, driven by positivity and optimism. Like, I'll, uh, like, I'll challenge anyone who's watching this video to beat me for positivity and optimism. You could throw anything to me and I would say, you know what? I will try to see the silver lining to this, to beat this challenge, mm. right? Um, and I think that's what drives me with, when I'm working on PR, this podcast, YouTube, um, my career. Like a lot of it is unknown. Like we're not in a training pathway right now. It's, a, it's very unknown, but I'm very optimistic about where I want to go. And I firmly believe I'll get there. Mm. Who knows whether I will or not. Mm. But the fact that in my mind I'm optimistic, I'm positive and I believe I will get there. Mm. Um, that's my, my thoughts on positivity. What's yours on that? I agree with that. And what I'd like to throw in is gratitude. Mm. And I remember I made a tweet about months ago. The act of gratitude, being grateful and thankful for what you have. And I think a lot of things, you know the saying like you don't realise how important it is until you lose it, right? So gratitude right being thankful for the things we have you know the saying of you know you don't realize what you have until you realize it you lose it sorry and you take things for granted once you realize that so one example my, my read when i was doing surgery was you know you're 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 annoyed you're getting bleeps left right and center and then he's like why don't you see it in this light which is you went to med school you qualified your training you're an f1 you're on a surgical block every time someone bleeps you they need your help and you're the only person in the whole hospital that can do what needs to be done. They have no one else to turn to, right? Mm. And then he's like, why don't you should be more, you should be grateful for the fact that you are a doctor. You got from medical school. Think of how many people want to be in your shoes. Mm. Think of how many people are willing to give an arm or a leg to even get into medical school, let alone get through it, right? And I think the act of gratitude being positive is a very important thing when you're stressed. Mm. You might be having financial problems. But at the same time, you might realize that, you know what, you have a loving family, you have a supporting family, you might have wife and kids mm. that irrespective of your financial situations are there and support you, right? You might have yeah. a roof over your head, you might have food. So gratitude, positivity is very, very important, I think. The, the research also shows that gratitude is so important as well, and history shows it. Mm. So as Muslims, right, we're taught from the past, right, that we should be looking at what we have and what others don't have. Mm. So a lot of us might say, ah, oh, like we've we've we really desire. Let's say, oh, it reminds me of that image actually. Remember that image? I don't know if you've seen it, where it shows a guy who's on a cycle and he's looking over and he's like, ah, oh, I wish I had a car. The guy in the car is looking over at the Lamborghini and saying, I wish I had a Lamborghini. Mm. But then there was someone who's who's not even got the capability of being mobile, who's looking and saying, I wish I could be mobile. Mm. We shouldn't be looking at over at the people who've got more than us yes for inspiration purposes and motivational purposes right because mm. it can fuel that optimism but for gratitude purposes we just need to look over on the other side and say damn i've got this and that person would kill for this um like health mm. health is probably one of the the most thing one of the things that i'm most grateful for especially as a doctor because you're in work and you see the people who've got like like for example, sickle cell, it's, it's something you live with and the pain that you go through and the repeated attendances to, health, to um, hospitals that you have to do, uh, attend uh, when you're in crisis. Um, I, like Health is one of the things that I am so, so grateful for and I think a lot of us can look at that and say, you know what, I'm really grateful for my health right now. But yeah, optimism, positivity with gratitude is really important for stress management. 
um, for sure, definitely. So another big, big one, and we touched on it before, is understanding that you can't control everything. There are certain things you cannot change. It's impossible. Yeah. And it's understanding that and basically realizing or kind of having that conversation with yourself and be like, okay, I'm stressed because of X, Y, or Z reasons, but I can't change this. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to stress over it. Whatever happens, happens. But these are the things I can control. Yeah. And I'm going to focus on that. And I'm going to focus on trying to figure that out. And then overall, hopefully your stress decreases or you find a solution. Mm -hmm. So I think understanding that not everything is within our means, within our control mm -hmm. and making an active effort to focus on the ones you can control. I think that is so important. I actually recently told someone that I said, look, in life, you have things you can control and things you can't control. And the situation we had was uh, discussing a certain um, circumstance where the person was worried about the other person's response. And I was like, you can't control the other person's response. Mm -hmm. You can control what response you give and how you respond to the situation. So just focus on that because you will never, no matter how much you try, you cannot control the other person's response. Um, so I completely agree with you. There's things in life you can control, things you can't focus on what you can. Um, so for sure. for sure. The last and final tip, we've covered everything, and I'm a big fan of this, mm. is sleep. I love sleeping, yeah. probably more than the average Joe. But on a more serious note, it is important. Sleep is super important. Like mm. we know after a night shift, once you're deprived of sleep, how groggy you are, how... Mm less alert and orientated to you are you're more irritable mm. so imagine being stressed while having inadequate sleep like you it is a recipe for disaster right you're not yeah. on point you're making mistakes you're losing concentrations you become irritable so sleep is something that we need to look after there's there's so many books on the points of why we sleep even even stuff like bad sleep can increase your likelihood of developing cancer like that's how important sleep is exactly no 100 percent. so there's that famous talk and book by kyle walker i think on why we sleep and there's so many studies from life expectancy disease ischemic heart disease having a stroke heart attack all of those risks go up and he talks about the benefits of sleep emotional regulation stress management uh, being able to even just like process everything that's happened in a day mm. right you might have gone for a really stressful situation or something like that you need sleep to just process that allow your brain to just file that away process it and let you reset and let's not forget the the physical uh, benefits of sleep right we have natural hormones and uh, steroid levels that need to just adjust to a circadian rhythm right it's important to regulate that um, this is why i'm really anti-night shifts um, just because i feel like it just really messes up my body i really hate doing night shifts for that reason um messes me up psychologically my days all over the place my thinking's all over the place my energy levels aren't even right like yeah. i came off a night shift two days ago and yet i'm feeling tired at lunchtime in the day mm. it doesn't nothing makes sense to me um but you're right sleep you have to make sure you get enough sleep it's one of the things i struggle on though i have to admit uh with all the projects that we do and everything sleep is probably my most challenging um thing that i need to i need to work on that actually i do need to work yeah. on that and I think a lot of people struggle with sleep and there's certain things you can do. And I looked into it. Mm. It's like, and I say it to my wife all the time, it's, you know, using devices before you go to sleep. Mm. Half an hour, four, five minutes before you plan to go to sleep, stop using devices. Mm. Try not to eat too quickly before you go to sleep. Avoid caffeine, stimulant before you're about to sleep. Because obviously if you have like a Red Bull and you plan to go to sleep in like 20 minutes, you're not going to yeah, be able to sleep. Exactly. You know, the room, the environment, it's called, I think it's called sleep hygiene or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain scents and smells you can have that encourage sleeping, mm -hmm. certain noises, a nice, cool, clean environment. So if you are someone that struggles to sleep, look into these things because it does make a difference and it does help. There you have it. 10 tips on how to manage stress. I'd love to know your thoughts on how you manage stress. Drop it in the comments below and we'll see you next week.